you think you know Adolf Hitler. You've never seen him like this before. Hitler's contemporaries, from his birth in Braunau to his death in the bunker, authentically flesh out the picture. Who was Hitler? Hitler neither finished school nor had any vocational training. He occasionally lived in homeless shelters or on the street. He refused to pursue a regular job. To this day, it seems inexplicable that he could come to power. Out of nowhere, Hitler became the Führer, leader of the German Reich, one of the most powerful men of the 20th century. Starting an inferno that engulfed the world and brought death to millions of people. The nation worshipped him and followed him blindly into the abyss. But during his lifetime, he kept his origins and his life secret. No one should know how or who he was. Fascinating and oppressive accounts from companions, friends and enemies, as well as the most extensive collection of archive material ever shown. Much of it, hitherto unpublished, reveal who Hitler was and how he could become what he was. A notorious liar and an unscrupulous murderer. As soon as Hitler gets out of prison, he re-establishes the NSDAP. After his imprisonment, he decides to take power by legal means instead of attempting a further coup. As the unquestioned leader of the NSDAP and the national camp, he develops the party into a powerful movement. The NSDAP attracts mainly young people and offers an alternative to the established bureaucratic parties. As the economy recovers in the late 1920s, the NSDAP stagnates. But with the crises at the beginning of the 1930s, Hitler's party regains popularity. Hitler loses the election for president. But in the next parliamentary elections, the NSDAP becomes the strongest party. Nevertheless, Hindenburg still refuses to appoint him chancellor. Hitler must rethink how he can come to power. At the head of the Reich stood an imperial field marshal, as far as I knew, with ultra-conservative views and a limited intellect. The anti-Republican Conservative Party, now called the German National, had occasionally participated in government. Why shouldn't this continue? Pursue further consolidation. Where were the alternatives? The Communists would never come to power, certainly not the National Socialists. Goloman student. Diary, November the 28th, 1926. Departure Monday morning. Arrival in the afternoon in Essen. Straight to the boss. He's happy that I've come to the auditorium. A huge hall filled to bursting with people. Hitler comes in. Then he speaks for two hours. He was the Führer again for whom it is a real pleasure to fight. Josef Goebbels, NSDAP leader of Berlin. After imprisonment in Landsberg, Hitler becomes the sole leader of the nationalist movement. He feels chosen by destiny to show Germany the way to national salvation. Although the party remains unsuccessful at the polls and membership increases only slowly, the personality cult around Hitler is growing. This Führer cult holds the National Socialist movement together across ideological divisions and personal differences. The salute Heil Hitler also began to take hold at about this time. It originally came from the harmless greeting Heil so-and-so, something you'd say to people in sporting or cycling clubs without using their names. Ernst Hampfstinger, Hitler acquaintance. Letter from Marga to Heinrich Himmler, March the 2nd, 1928. 
Dear sweetheart, earlier on I tried to imagine how you looked as a boy. Do you have any pictures? Why are you going to a Hitler meeting? You know what he has to say. Sweetheart, I kiss you, your little wife. Gregor Strasser in Dresden, 1929. The druggist Gregor Strasser has been the Reich Organization Director of the NSDAP since 1928, and thus the party's second most important man. In the north of the German Reich, he ensures a rise in popularity for the NSDAP, but he is a socialist revolutionary and committed to cooperating with the Soviet Union, and thus comes more and more into conflict with Hitler. Since 1925, Strasser has sponsored his secretary, the young Heinrich Himmler. At Hitler's behest, Himmler will have Strasser murdered by the SS on June 30, 1934. The German Interior Ministry states in March 1927 that the NSDAP is not moving forward. It did not succeed in bringing its supporters even close to the strength that it reached in the year 1923. Hitler had failed to reach the middle class himself. Now, when the middle class fell with the mark and were later exasperated by the world crisis, he offered himself as their savior. Depressed, they wanted dreams. He offered them dreams for the moment and security for the future. He made them fight and they made him a god, the god of the petty bourgeois, precisely because he thought and spoke what was inarticulate in their minds. Stephen H. Roberts, Australian historian who lived in Germany during the 1920s. In 1928, Hitler rents a small house on the Obersalzberg, known as Haus Wachenfeld. He used to stay here under the name Herr Wolf. Hitler allows his closest friends to call him Wolf. The reason for this? Hitler went by the nickname Wolf at the beginning of his political career. Heinrich Hoffmann, friend of Adolf Hitler. Hitler understands the name as the Germanic root of Adolf. It corresponds to his view of the world as a place of constant struggle for survival. To Hitler, the name Wolf implies the idea of strength, aggression and solitude. Wieland, Wolfgang, Verena and I, we all loved Wolf because he enthralled us with his adventure stories about his travels through Germany. For us, his life was exciting because it was so different. Everything was like a fairy tale. Friedelin Wagner, granddaughter of Richard Wagner. Soon, Hitler has enough money to buy Haus Wachenfeld. From 1924 onwards, the German economy recovers. This leads to the five golden years of the Weimar Republic. Looking back on it now, I see the mad whirl of this Berlin of 1928 and 29 as a kind of Pompeian revel on the eve of the Vesuvian eruption. Sefton Delmer, correspondent of the Daily Express in Berlin. Diary, September the 19th, 1928. Elsa wrote that she has had her hair cut in a bob. I am shocked, would never have thought it possible. But one shouldn't be surprised at anything nowadays. Diary, October the 3rd, 1928. Yesterday, Elsa visited, cheery and gay. Her bob suits her extremely well, nevertheless. To me, it looks awful and will remain so. Henrietta Schneider, housekeeper, East Prussia. The Nazis hated culture itself because it is essentially international and therefore subversive of nationalism. Christopher Isherwood, British-American writer.
In the 1920s, Berlin was ahead of everything that was known as new in our field. It had everything. Reinhardt's great theater, great film studios, great films. The most beautiful bars and restaurants, including gay bars. Berlin was productive and rich with ideas, rich in ideals and at the same time practical, a combination never achieved before. Marlene Dietrich, actress and singer, memoirs. If Maestro Klemperer takes the tempi differently than Fort Bengler, if a painter adds to a dusker hue, which one cannot even in bright daylight perceive in Pomerania, if one is for birth control, if one builds a house with a flat roof, this is all cultural Bolshevism, as is showing a caesarean section in a film. Cultural Bolshevism is practiced by the actor Chaplin, and if the physicist Einstein asserts that the principle of a constant speed of light can only be invoked where there is no gravity, this must also be cultural Bolshevism, and a personal favor to Mr. Stalin. Karl von Ossietzky, publisher of the Weltbühne magazine, Art was no longer a mere ornament of life, but rather its immediate expression. Cubism, futurism, expressionism, whatever you want to call it, this is how we were. This was our world, so shaken and shocked that everything was upside down. Surrealism, of course, what else? Vicky Baum, writer and journalist. I met Hitler personally for the first time in early October 1927. He was accompanied by Rudolf Hess. In the hotel, Hitler immediately went to his room. Hess followed him quickly after ordering 20 bottles of mineral water for the lectern on the grounds that Hitler sweated a great deal during the big speeches and he was liable to lose five pounds in weight. Albert Krebs, provincial NSDAP leader, Hamburg. The old Social Democratic People's Party had almost no orators able to mobilize the masses. While the National Socialist speakers whipped their followers into a frenzy, the Social Democrats tormented their listeners with figures, statistics and evidence. Julius Leber, editor-in-chief, Social Democratic Lübecker Volksbauten newspaper. Langsam durch den Versailler Vertrag planmäßig eingeleitete Gespenst des asiatischen Bolschewismus. Und ich hatte damals den Entschluss, größere Erkenntnis zu überwinden. On November the 16th, 1928, for the first time after the ban on public speaking in Prussia has been lifted, Hitler speaks in the Sportpalast in Berlin, allegedly in front of 18,000 supporters. For the first time, he uses an electroacoustic sound system, speaking into a microphone. And, for the first time, his words are clearly understood in every corner of a large space. Between 1925 and 1929, Hitler's small political movement is marked by activism, dynamism, enthusiasm, youthfulness and strength. Nearly 60% of new party members are under 30 years old. The Reich banner, black, red, gold, a League of German War Veterans and Republicans, was founded 1924 in Magdeburg. 
in 1932, the banner has more than three million members. At first, people laughed at the parades, the meetings full of incidents and brawl. But it soon became clear that neither the underlying ideology nor the wild determination of his representatives had been correctly estimated. The workers' movement mobilized its forces, increased the supporters' activity, and created defenses in the form of the Reich banner black-red-gold, the Iron Front, and special protective formations called Schufos. I was one of the younger driving forces and very committed to all of this. Wilhelm Matur, Social Democrat, Königsberg. There was only one way for us to save the Republic. To unite with the left-wing parts of the Democratic Party and the Centre Party and find a common approach. Due to the authoritarianism of the state, it would have been impossible for the Social Democratic Party to establish a purely party political military organization for the protection of the Republic and the working class against fascism. Karl Hultemann, Vice President, Reich Banner, Black, Red, Gold. By the way, you could buy a pistol, a 7.65 caliber, factory new for a giveaway price. A putsch was more or less expected any day. The air was full of such rumors. Horst Vessel, law student in Berlin. And of course we gave ourselves military training, but not in order to overthrow the state, but to defend ourselves. Police and fascist thugs kept attacking demonstrations and disrupting meetings. We had the Red Front Fighter League and the Red Youth Front. In the evening, we practiced judo on the banks of the River Elbe and learned how to move around in groups safely and unobtrusively at night. We never sought or provoked brawls. We just defended ourselves against raids and often got beaten up. Horst Zindermann, communist youth official, Dresden, before daylight. Street processions, press promotions, propaganda tours into the provinces created an atmosphere of activism and tension. There were countless clashes and wounded people, even dead people, left in the square. Horst Vessel, autobiography. In February 1930, one of the casualties will be the Berlin student Horst Vessel. Parliamentary elections on May the 20th, 1928, the Social Democrat SPD and the Communist KPD win 40% of the votes at the expense of the nationalist parties. The NSDAP earns only 2.6% of the votes and 12 seats. In 1930, the NSDAP bought new premises, the Brown House, near Königsplatz. The money for the purchase is donated to the NSDAP by industrialist Fritz Thyssen. Hitler will have Thyssen arrested and jailed at the end of 1940. For his study, Hitler had a large corner room on the first floor, which I can barely remember because I seldom saw him there. Not even the large Friedericus Rex painting on the wall could persuade him to keep regular working hours or treat appointments as binding. 
Ernst Hanfstengel. Despite the lack of political success, the party stages spectacular rallies, first in Munich and Weimar, then from 1927 onwards, exclusively in Nuremberg. Diary, Nuremberg, August the 4th, 1929. A stampede of people that exceeds our wildest hopes. Outside, the drums are already booming. Torchlight processions, endlessly long. Josef Goebbels, NSDAP leader of Berlin. The party conventions are, without question, Hitler's personal work. Just as he was involved in building the SA, from the smallest details of the uniforms to the color of the collar patches, he concerned himself with the planning of the party conventions, right down to the decorations in the Congress Hall. Albert Krebs, NSDAP leader, Hamburg. Through the city, a triumphant procession. Everyone cheering and throwing flowers. March past, almost four hours. A sea of joy and flowers. Josef Goebbels. The continuing fragmentation of the party landscape is advantageous for the rise of the NSDAP. In elections, they win more and more support from the splinter and protest parties. October 1929. Angry autumn after a beautiful summer. Rain and calm weather and something suffocating in the air. And it wasn't the weather. For the first time on the street, manure brown uniforms. Sebastian Hafner, journalist, memoirs. The SPD had won the parliamentary elections of 1928 and since then led a coalition government with the middle-class parties. This falls apart over domestic policies one year after the death of the Liberal Foreign Minister Stresemann. The fall of the SPD Chancellor Hermann Müller and the appointment of the Central Party's Heinrich Brüning are the first steps towards the abandonment of the Weimar Republic by the founding parties. National Socialists were now sitting in Parliament. The rise of the party could no longer be overlooked. Ernst Nikisch, national Bolshevist, Hitler opponent. In foreign policy, Hitler promised to free the country from the injustices of the Versailles Treaty. Domestically, he promised to eliminate unemployment and political squabbling. Heinz Guderian, colonel of the German army. In 1930, Chancellor Brüning convinces President von Hindenburg to dissolve Parliament and call for new elections 24 months early. Brüning is determined to govern with the help of the President, if necessary without a majority, by presidential decree. Following the example of Italy, at the end of the 1920s, movements which are called fascist are gaining strength all over Europe. In some Eastern European states, dictatorial governments rely on the support of such factions. A union of fascists is also established in the UK, a party demonstration in Manchester in 1934. In 1930, unemployment had increased to 3,076,000, 
and the National Socialists then increased their MPs to 108, with a vote of 18%. Less than three years later, the National Socialist Party came to power. Unemployment had risen to 6,014,000. Sir Oswald Mosley, born 1896, founder, British Union of Fascists. Diary, September the 15th, 1930, the first election results. Fantastic. The bourgeois parties are smashed. Up to now, we have 103 seats, a tenfold increase. Josef Goebbels. The day after the election, the composition and climate of politics in Germany have changed fundamentally. The NSDAP has risen from a Bavarian political sect to become the second biggest party, fundamentally opposed to the democracy of the Weimar Republic. The Social Democrats suffer only minor losses, mostly to the Communists. Catholic voters link up effectively with the Catholic Centre Party. They lose only a few votes. After the lost election, you sensed for the first time strong displeasure with the party leadership from within the Social Democratic ranks. A deep-seated disillusionment with the big wigs came over the Social Democratic organization. Julius Leber, SPD member of the Reichstag. The electoral gains of the NSDAP are greatest in the predominantly Protestant regions of rural northern and eastern Germany. Some three-quarters of the voters are Protestant. The middle class is overrepresented with 40%. Yet the NSDAP is not a purely middle-class party. The Hitler movement, as the party is called by friend and foe, finds favor among all sectors of society, including industrial workers. I went to a Nazi rally. It was held in a beer hall. Some drank beer, the others sat in front of empty tables. There were a lot of workers there. That hurt terribly. Ilya Ehrenburg, Russian Jewish author. Nothing succeeds like success, as they say in English. Stefan Heim, student in Berlin. Diary, November the 12th, 1930. Röhm arrives from Bolivia, where he was active in the army. He's very nice to me, and I like him a lot. An open, straight soldier type. Josef Goebbels. The years from 1931 to 1935, apart from my anxiety on public affairs, were personally very pleasant to me. I earned my livelihood. I meditated constantly upon the European situation and the rearming of Germany. Winston Churchill, the Second World War. New Year's order, December the 31st, 1931. The army of brown shirts has multiplied numerous times. The movement has suffered a great deal of blood sacrifice. Comrades, at the beginning of this year, I thank you for everything that you accomplished over the past year through dedicated work and self-sacrificing battles. You can enter the new year with joyful confidence, proud of what you achieved in the year 1931. Adolf Hitler. Hitler sent a really good New Year's message to the Nazis. The world will sit up and take notice. The communists will have to watch out. Henrietta Schneider, diary. Speech to the Industrial Club of Dusseldorf, January the 26th, 1932. Summary. I see two principles ruggedly opposed to each other. The principle of democracy, which is the principle of destruction, wherever it is practiced. And the principle of the authority of the personality, 
that I would describe as the principle of achievement. Adolf Hitler. The upper class is getting closer to Hitler. My grandfather had the right saying for these turncoats. You spit in their eyes and they ask you if it's raining. Bella Fromm, German-Jewish journalist, diary. Diary, Tuesday, February the 23rd, 1932. After coffee, Frau Knispel appeared with the news that Hitler is standing for the German presidential elections. Henrietta Schneider. After an internal party discussion in Munich on February the 2nd, Adolf Hitler decides to run in the first round of voting in the German presidential elections of March 1932. One problem with his candidacy is that Hitler is not a citizen of the German Reich, which doesn't award citizenships of its own until 1934. Whoever has or gains citizenship of one of the 24 German states is a citizen of the Reich. Thus, Thomas Mann, for instance, has citizenship of the free Hanseatic city of Lübeck and a corresponding passport. By law, Hitler was stateless because bureaucratic chicanery on the one hand and personal negligence on the other had repeatedly delayed his proper naturalization. Now, however, settling this question was merely a formality once it had become possible for the Brunswick provincial government, made up of Nazis and German nationals, to arrange automatic German citizenship for him at any time by means of a pro forma appointment to some position in the civil service. Ernst Hampfstengel, head of the NSDAP Foreign Press Bureau. In the states of the German Reich, a civil servant automatically becomes a citizen and thus a German national. This also happened to the Swiss Albert Einstein, against his will, who had become a Prussian official in 1917. Hitler was entrusted with doing the job of a clerk for economic affairs of the state of Brunswick at the Brunswick Embassy in Berlin, an office he never held. It is thus all the more surprising that Adolf Hitler nevertheless re-registered his official place of abode as Brunswick. After all, for one and a half years, Adolf Hitler appeared in the official list of inhabitants of Brunswick and deregistered on September the 16th, 1933 as Reich Chancellor, Berlin Wilhelmstrasse. Hartmann Lauterbacher, provincial leader of the Hitler Youth South Hanover, Brunswick. Berlin, this 26th day of February 1932, at the Brunswick Embassy. Today, Adolf Hitler appeared before me, who according to the decree of the Chairman of the Brunswick State Ministry and the Brunswick Minister of Finance of February the 25th, 1932, is now present as a senior civil servant employed by the State of Brunswick. After being informed of the requirements, he took the mandatory oath of service. I swear loyalty to the constitution of the Reich and the state, obedience to the laws and conscientious fulfillment of my duties. Adolf Hitler. Read aloud and signed, Adolf Hitler, senior civil servant. Letter to the Embassy of Braunschweig in Berlin, February the 28th, 1932. Reference, leave. I hereby request you to grant me leave until the end of the presidential election campaign. Respectfully yours, Adolf Hitler. When I landed in Munich on a day in March, I was told, Herr Hitler has rung from the Brown House. He's planning to fly to various cities in the Reich and he wants to rent a plane. You have been recommended to him. During the election campaign, he wanted to travel by plane and visit up to five cities in one evening. Hitler told me that, frankly, he had little confidence in flying. He saw the flights as a necessary evil. And so it was that in 1932, three major election flights were made. Hans Bauer, Lufthansa pilot, I flew the powerful of the world.
Diary, Berlin, February the 16th, 1932. What a strange country in which the presidency must be decided between Thälmann, Hitler or Hindenburg. Thea Sternheim, art collector and author. Hindenburg was meant to serve as a shield against Hitler's rise. That was also the reason why the Social Democrats supported his re-election in 1932. Paul Löbe, Social Democrat, president of the Reichstag. Again, it was the politics of toleration when the SPD asked its voters to vote for Hindenburg and how faithfully they followed. Golo Mann, Memoirs and Thoughts. Diary, Monday, February the 29th, 1932. Who will win? Henrietta Schneider. Election campaign flight, April 1932. Soon Hitler had sunk into morose apathy. He just sat there, staring gloomily out of the window, wads of cotton in his ears. A complete contrast to the glad hand extrovert man at Tempelhof. Sefton Delmer, British correspondent of the Daily Express in Berlin. We must have visited each of the major cities once, if not several times. And afterwards, it was always claimed that Hitler was the first German politician to come to power who knew the country inside and out. Ernst Hampstein. As the door of the aircraft was flung open, Hitler ducked out and immediately threw himself into his Führer pose. There he stood, bareheaded, upright and unsmiling, his hand raised in greeting. Sefton Delma. It was always the same routine. He gave his presentation, had his bags packed, and on to the next city. Ernst Hanfstengel. He gave four or five speeches a day and flew from one rally to another. It was one of the few times that I heard him speak in public. We were led up to the podium. We tried hard to stay awake until the Führer's plane arrived late. Minutes later, he began his speech. He was hoarse and his jarring voice was emotionally charged and swept over the audience like a storm that takes one's breath away and leaves people excited. Friedelin Wagner, Diary, Weimar, April the 10th, 1932, Sunday. Second round of voting in German presidential election. Hindenburg finally elected over Hitler. Harry Graf Kessler, publicist and diplomat. When the victory of a tired, senile, not overly bright old soldier like Hindenburg over an obnoxious, hysterical social climber is the best that we can get, it's good night, Germany. Vicky Baum, writer. Letter, April the 20th, 1932. My dear Mr. Hitler, for your birthday, we are sending you our best wishes from our warm children's hearts. When we told our parents that it was a pity we couldn't do anything for you because we're only ten and five years old. Our parents said, you can pray for Adolf Hitler every day. And we'll be doing that every evening. Our prayer will be as follows. Oh God, may your blessing accompany Adolf Hitler wherever he goes. Give him the strength to free the fatherland, soon with a strong, good hand. Your faithful little Nazis, Leonora and Erhard L. Hamburg.
I myself have no instinct for the character expressed in faces. For a long time, I have had a not very pleasant, yet not strongly unpleasant impression of Hitler in photographs. Ludwig Quidder, German Nobel Peace Prize laureate, 1927. Berlin, November the 8th, 1931. Nothing smells more penetratingly than the nationally scented petit bourgeois. Everything is falling apart. Where are we heading? Thea Sternheim. More than the Nazis, the communists hate the social democrats, whom they defame as social fascists. With what they call a Leninist strategy, they want to make the Weimar Republic ungovernable and create conditions for a revolution through the collapse of the capitalist system. Diary, May the 31st, 1932. Lotte is coming on Sunday. She's planning a trip with Karl to Westerland. Yesterday, Brüning resigned. Now what? Henrietta Schneider. Open letter to Theodor Leipart, German Trade Union Confederation. Ernst Thälmann, Communist Party of Germany. Otto Wells, Social Democratic Party of Germany. We, the undersigned, observe the development of political events with the impression that we are approaching a dreadful threat of fascization. In our view, this danger can be eliminated by the merger of the two major workers' parties in the election campaign. The responsibility lies with the leaders. Only the obvious desire of the workers to stand together should be decisive. Albert Einstein, Heinrich Mann, Kate Kollwitz. The hero of Tannenberg, the hero of the German Republic, had a dull spirit, our grumpy field marshal with his robust conscience. With truly Germanic blind loyalty, he betrayed the pious chancellor to whom he owed his power. Brüning was fired. His successor, the comparatively liberal General von Schleicher, was soon the target of wild intrigue. Klaus Mann, son of Katya and Thomas Mann. In June 1932, Franz von Papen, on behalf of Reich President von Hindenburg, forms a right-wing conservative cabinet, which is without a majority in parliament. The new chancellor hopes for the support of Hitler and, according to Hitler's demand, asks the Reich President to call new parliamentary elections on July the 31st. For far too long, we had been content with laughing and joking about the house painter Hitler. <laughs> Karl Zuckmeier, German-Austrian dramatist. Diary, Sunday, the July the 31st, 1932. The hatred of the parties is awful. At 10 o'clock, the elections begin, without Wilhelm. He is plagued with neuralgia. Henrietta Schneider. The triumph of the National Socialists in the July elections of 1932 is a Pyrrhic victory, although all forms of propaganda have been exhausted, leaving the party deeply in debt. They have barely increased their vote over the elections of the spring. In a large portion of the remote villages, Hitler had the absolute majority in the parliamentary elections in July, often even two-thirds of the votes. How does one account for their success? The Nazis came into the villages, ranted and raved and promised them the moon. Maria Leitner, German-speaking Hungarian journalist and communist. Diary, August the 1st, 1932. Election results. 
We have gained a little ground. Marxism has gained a great deal. Now we have to seize power and wipe out Marxism. Either way, Hitler is also of this opinion. We won't get an absolute majority this way. Josef Goebbels. Hitler rejects Chancellor von Papen's offer to serve as vice-chancellor in his government and demands the office of chancellor itself. President von Hindenburg refuses to grant Hitler governmental power and warns that all acts of terror will be dealt with severely. As almost all the major parties in the Reichstag want to bring down von Papen's government, Reich President von Hindenburg dissolves the newly elected parliament in September and calls new elections on November the 6th, 1932. Diary, Wednesday, September the 21st, 1932. I'm following political developments in a state of pleasant titillation and yet numbness. I literally have no sympathy for any of those now wrestling with each other. Viktor Klemperer, Professor of Romance Studies, Dresden. Diary, Friday, October the 21st, 1932. Lotte announced that she had seen Adolf and that she really liked him. Lore also heard him, but didn't see him well. She couldn't afford an expensive five-mark seat. Henrietta Schneider. As my wife and I had voted for the German National Party in July 1932, after some hesitation, we voted for Hitler in the elections of November the 6th, the same year. So we too succumbed to the fallacy that a government takeover by the NSDAP would stabilize political and economic conditions. Alexander, Count of Dornarschlobitten, East Prussian landowner. Diary, November the 6th, 1932. Complied with compulsory voting, but still Social Democrat. Election results on the radio, the Nazis have lost, the KPD have gained. Klaus Mann, writer. In the German elections of November 1932, the NSDAP won 11.75 million votes, the SPD 7.25 million, and the KPD some 6 million. So together, both workers' parties were a lot stronger than the Nazis. Manus Sperber, Austrian writer and KPD member at the time. In the state elections in Thuringia in December, the NSDAP even loses 40% of its votes. Many unemployed people turn their backs on the Nazis. They now put their hopes in the communists and the German nationals. Many leftists believed that Hitler would never recover from this setback and had ceased to be a menace. Christopher Isherwood, British-American writer. Despite knowing better, left-wing intellectuals continued to enjoy their feeling of steady advancement. Their poems and songs, their satirical and political plays and cabaret pieces, their articles, their books and polemics, all of this resonated so strongly that for them it was as if they were standing at the loom of time. Manis Sperber. Hitler doesn't win the election after achieving a majority, but despite losing votes in the parliamentary elections of November. He needs the support of reactionary allies in high places. They believe that with Hitler's help, they can eliminate the communists and social democrats. These forces succeed in a few short weeks in bringing the German president around, who, thanks to the constitution, is very powerful. Snow was already falling heavily and the shop windows were festively decorated. It was hard to get through the crowds thronging the sumptuously bedecked department stores. The new general chancellor did not dissolve the Reichstag at all, 
So, thank God, there were no new elections. The people were allowed to celebrate Christmas and New Year's Eve in peace. There was knee-high snow in the streets, and the rush of the hungry unemployed to do the work of removing the snow was so strong that there weren't enough shovels to go round. Oscar Maria Graf, writer from my life.